welcome to podcast number four with the uber-talented footy player Millie Boyle. Millie is both a Queensland and New South Wales state representative for both rugby union and rugby league, as well as being an Australian representative player across both codes in the Dillaroos and the Woolaroos also. Millie shares her journey from small town country girl and the travelling commitments she made year after year in order to feed her sporting lifestyle. After a huge move from home to Canberra to Gold Coast, Queensland, Millie navigates us through the pressures and stresses and comparable differences of what it is to be a star in both rugby union and rugby league as a female in this day and age. Her recent and frightening neck injury allows Millie to really open up on the importance of mental health and how taking care of yourself and balance is crucial both on and off the field. If you want to hear more, sub yourself in. Kia ora, hello and welcome to Subbed, a raw but genuine space for our players and athletes, our idols and sportswomen to give insight into their journeys of becoming the unapologetically talented females that they are. Hear the struggles and adversity and celebrations of diversity as we peel back and sub you in into some of the most powerful and untold experiences of what it is to be a successful female in sport. Yeah. All right. Okay. Welcome to our subbed podcast. Today I have a very good friend, Millie Boyle, and she is a talented rugby union, rugby league. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> singer. Singer. Oh. Yeah. I've actually got the guitars here, so we could do something we'll maybe at the end. Jam later. <laughs> um, so welcome, Millie. Thank you for. Um, inviting me into your home your new home i actually had to do a trade-off for a boot camp <laughs> this morning in order to get a podcast um, but we finally managed to cross paths and we're going to have a chat um, with millie today about family upbringing injury and lots of things in between so thank you very much thank you so excited this is um such a cool thing that you've got going on and i've been listening to all of your little episodes with um lots of inspiring people so i'm just so happy to be one of them yes and i'm very happy that you're keen to come on as well so we'll get started um and like we said i'll just get you to done a bit of an intro um just share with us how you grew up because you're not originally from the gold coast where we are today um so let us know how you grew up who you grew up with and how you sort of wandered into the world of sport yeah so um i grew up down on the far south coast of new south wales um, in a little town called Cabago. It's about five hours south of Sydney. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm one of five kids. Um, I've got an older brother, Morgan, and three little sisters, Daisy, Stella, and Hannah. Um, and we grew up on a farm and we played lots of sport, lots of sport just here and there, whatever we could do really to get us out of school slash keep us busy on the weekends. Yeah. Um, I started playing rugby league when I was five um, in the under sixes my brother played my little sister played my dad was coaching we were always just really involved mum would work in the canteen and be our taxi everywhere we went Um, so I played rugby league up until I was 12 um, and then had to stop playing and then I went to I was um, sorry I went to Bigger High School and uh, we had a rugby team which was crazy I'd never even heard of this game of rugby never watched it didn't know the rules took me about five years to learn the actual rules um and I yeah no I still don't know what I'm doing um so I started playing in high school like sevens um and then a bit of 15s we did like school knockout stuff where we'd go up to Canberra and play a lot of um rugby up there and I got kind of involved with the um, Brumbies schoolgirls and then the Brumbies women's team mm-hmm. as I got a little bit older. Um, in year 12, went, um, sorry, and played for the, like the youth world school sevens or whatever it was, like the... Just the world the, No, well, it was like the under-18s Aussie yeah. team. So it was like, that was my first little taste of um, international <laughs> footy. So that was good fun. That's a great achievement. Yeah, it was really cool. It was yeah. um, fun. And there's so many girls who were playing in that team who are just killing it now. So okay. it's awesome to see like how 
far they've progressed in sport and um yeah so I I was training in Canberra Mm. so I'd do like the three hour so a six hour round trip just to go to training on the weekends whether I could hitchhike a lift or when I got my peas like yeah yeah, mom um when I got my peas it was like driving up and staying at friends and staying at family's house um and then come back to school lots of that and then I ended up moving to Canberra at the end um when I finished year 12 um to play by yourself um yeah I moved up by myself and but I had some family up there so I was always close to them and um then I think it was like 2017 I moved to the Gold Coast um at the end of 2017 so I've been here for like three years now and I'm busy um how old are you now um 22 so that that is a lot to um jam pack yeah no 22 yeah so it's been awesome and I love it up here and um yeah I love Queensland so nice that's cool I think if we um rewind back to when you were saying like you just started playing league did you play for any reason in particular like I know that dad yeah or was your brother an influence yeah like it was just kind of the normal yeah it was kind of like the normal thing I mean um we were just not expected to play but that was our family sport and we always watched footy and um my brother played and yeah my dad used to play back in the day and then he did the whole like back in the little local team and he was like yeah. captain coach and that kind of thing so he played and we just loved playing like yeah. it was just so it's much just fun like all of our friends yeah um yeah it was just really fun I remember sometimes playing up in my brother's team getting smashed by like the under 12s when I was only 10 I was like whoa yeah. this is not for me these guys are too big so what was it like being a girl in the because you said you stopped playing at 12 is mm. that because that's the cutoff yeah it's the cutoff and they're like see I'll go play like yeah. um league tag or netball or whatever it was and yeah. it's like boring um no they're all right but it was just like I loved league and we yeah. were always such a passionate league family yeah. um but Growing up, like, it was awesome, like, because girls get, like, their growth spurts earlier, earlier than guys, like, yeah, I was, like, the biggest of my team, <laughs> it's, like, sweet, ripping and tearing through these little under eights, <laughs> and I was probably the size of a 12-year-old, <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was good fun, like, we didn't have the strongest team, because we yeah. were just a little Country. small town, and um, the bigger towns, like, Bega and Naruma um, would always beat us. But, you know, we had fun and we had a good group of people and, um, yeah, I loved it and That's it was cool. just really good fun. That's cool. And then you came through the rugby union, rec. so that was after – or that was obviously after – once you could play union and then you moved up to Canberra. Is that where you started to get your exposure and, like, rip stuff? And yeah. And that was, I think – I th- yeah, Super W wasn't. No, there. that no, wasn't a thing. It was like nationals. it was nationals. That's yeah, right. so I actually remember. Um, so we'd go up on. I was still like in year eleven or twelve, and I was yeah. playing for the Brumbies women's team, and yeah. I just love the Brumbies. Like we had the best group of girls. It was always so much fun. We'd always actually end up playing you guys, Queensland in the final. Yeah. And it was oh no in the semi. So we'd the, like the playoff. Yeah, the you'd play like no footy at all then you'd play like four games in four days and it was like we'd always play Queensland in the semi to play um Sydney Sydney. in the final and we get flogged and it was like yeah but um that was always such a good like it was such a great um learning curve for me and I met so many great people through in Canberra we would like train on a Sunday morning and then like go and um go to the Dixon traffic lights and uh, wash windows to uh, raise money for our nationals tournament <laughs> but you know at the time we're like how fun is this team bonding and we made a lot of money yeah. um for our trip so it was a win-win we sold programs we yeah five dollar programs mm, that doesn't sound as fun as washing cars though no. and we carried around buckets <laughs> asking for money every day. That's, yeah yes. it's kind of sad but, uh, yeah, I mean, but that's what you had to do. That's what you so had to do, and it was, like, too expensive, out of pocket. So it was, like, you know what, it's what we're going to do. So Whatever works. Whatever works. And you know, family are so sick of buying all these raffle tickets. Ticket and it's, know. like, I don't even know what it's for, like a jersey or something. Yeah, and it was probably yours anyway. Yeah, exactly. like that, so, yeah. It's but, only so many. We can buy Millie. Stop selling these. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then how did you get picked up then from 
playing was it playing at nationals did you get invited to camps yeah was, it was um i think we went to the same camp did we was yeah, it in think, um, 2016 well, maybe so or Brown, 2017 the, where to, it was here it was like on the gold coast bond, yeah, yeah it's a yeah. bond um and that was my first That's like right, they invited us and we're like Who's the sixth one for you? <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, how cool is this? I've made it in life. I met my first Wallaroos <laughs> extended camp. Like it was just like, I was really excited. I think it was yeah. like, I was still in year 12. So I was like, this is really cool to get my... Oh, so you're still at school. Was it in 2016? Yeah. Yeah, gosh. I think so. Yeah. And so, yeah, actually it was. And so we had that camp and I was like, this is so cool. And I just remember like having, there were so many players who would, were there that I had no idea who these people were but they'd been playing for years and yeah. they're the type of people that That's have fine. been through everything to get it even where it was a few years ago like they yeah. just done all the hard work with like basically no recognition of the game and it was just so cool to be there around those people like you know you've got Ash Houston, Louise Burrows, you've got yeah. Alicia Hewitt like those girls Rebecca Clough, who'd been there for so long that was still kicking on and not kicking on, they were still killing yeah. it in yeah, their yeah. position. And amongst. that's who I was amongst when I first got there. And um, yeah. I think, um, so Paul, yeah, Paul was coaching and, that's right. and Scotty, Scotty, yeah. And um, I remember I got dropped. Like, like they had like a, a New Zealand game. It was like a Bledisloe a game. Yeah, yeah, a test. Right. And they called me oh. to say that I'd been dropped. Like I didn't make it, and I was like, I was in Woolies, and I was like, oh my god, my life's over. I was just crying, like I'm never gonna make the team. And in like, Woolies, yeah, I was in Woolies, oh. and then <laughs> yeah, I love Woolies. <laughs> I love grocery shopping. It's probably oh. nice to just finish off my grocery shop crying. Yeah, um, but you still would have only been. 18, yeah, I think I was like 17, 17 or 18 and okay. I um was I like went home to mum. I was like I didn't make it and yeah. you know, but she That's was like That's tough. That's always Yeah. Like, um, those for, I've been a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a lot of those focus. Yeah. And um that not one single one of them has ever been easy yeah. to take. It's and like, well what could have I what I th- thought I tried my best yeah, or whatever it was and it's right. like might not just be ready or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. But um, rejection sucks. Though, yeah. Regardless. Which, but you know what? It gives you like that, well, this sucks and I don't want it to happen again. Mm. Um, what can I do more to not be in that position? Or Yeah, I was, I was, I was just going to say that. So obviously you've, you've done a big 180 from those days to be quite successful and be picked up a lot now. Mm. What did you take away from that? Rejection. Rejection. <laughs> selection. Um, how did you go back to the drawing board or what sort of yeah. changes did well, you Well, I just thought, like, at the end of the day, I was like, okay, I am still pretty young and inexperienced. Like like I said, I was probably still learning the rules yeah. and everything and um, not sure what position I would have really played. I was kind of like um, second row, back row, that, um, you know, that position, but not really owning any of those positions. So I knew that I had to kind of be better at that and I was you know what I was like 10 kilos lighter so I yeah. was still like in year 12 playing sevens and Lightweight. like yeah I was like Four fifteens. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly so I was kind of getting thrown around I guess you could say compared to like the girls who were only yeah, those positions stuff. because of their weight and their caliber and their size and their strength so um I ended up playing like like I was saying the youth of the sevens and I played in the like at Central Coast with the development team so um with like alongside like Shani and Shannon and you know a lot of awesome girls like Chloe Dalton and um oh I don't know all those amazing girls who just got back fresh from Rio I'm like how cool is this yeah one thing to the other so um yeah it was just like really fun um and then um that was kind of the end of my uh, sevens career. Oh, <laughs> I was so like, how, how did you not um, carry on the sevens? Um, did you? I just. Want to, I or? really got into like after I moved to Canberra, I really got yeah. into the fifteens, and like my body started to change a lot. I started to put on some weight, and I was like, yeah. I'm really like not that fast and not that <laughs> skillful. Um, 
but I had a good work ethic in 15s and that's yeah. who I like that suited me a lot more and I liked the fact that you could go in preparing for one game knowing you had a role and like once you've done that game you put it aside and then you go to training and you turn up for the next week whereas sevens you have like all these ups and downs like you miss one tackle and then lose the game for your team and it's like oh this is too much stress and pressure and I wasn't that good at it so it was like I was I I would I'll be the first one to say I'm not a sevens player like that. It was just not me and I figured that out as I, you know, yeah. started to like 15s more and that other side of the game. Your, yeah, your body exactly. And, your and I totally body. admire people that play sevens and are super fit and yeah. can handle that roller coaster of emotions of winning to losing to rest, turn off here, switch on here. Yeah. Like, it, you and know. And back then the setup was different with in terms of when you got to play like mm. there was there's no sort of thing that runs parallel to like a club season yeah no, now nothing. there's obviously aeon but yeah before then so you train all year literally round for a nationals such a, tournament such a small window of opportunity yeah to play. and then like if you're on an off week which is so many variables that add up to an off week especially for a female playing this contact sport yeah it's like oh well there i'm i'm done i'm never yeah. playing <laughs> I know, and I do want to. I know just the nature of what this all is about. Yeah. What makes up your off weeks? You know how you just yeah. Uh, there's so many so variables. Like, I, know, I know mine. Like, yeah. What sort of like um, for one, you're you're playing this contact sport, so you're going to be sore, and then you're going to feel down. You're away from home, like family things, periods, like. Work. just the everything your emotions and yeah. anything trying to keep up with work and having enough money pressure from work to take work off to go and play footy and yeah. you're always putting footy first so everything's on the back burn yeah. like friends family everything that you love so much it's like sorry got to play footy or yeah. and then you play a shit game and it's like <laughs> is it even all worth it why am i even here and, <laughs> and all the driving and training and yeah, everything you, you put in yeah, yeah, all the driving and like, I remember getting like five minutes into my drive knowing I've still got three hours to go thinking, what am I doing? Like, I just call mom on the phone and just left home. I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> so how did you, what, what things did you put in place to top all those variables like you said and like we all know it we don't get paid yeah yeah oh. <laughs> like, and the people that thought we so, did i was like what where'd you hear that yeah so <laughs> paying. Who's getting paid? we pay to play yeah so <laughs> what what was it that made it so um convincing for you to make the three hour drives to give up family friends time to Get your All of that studying at school and uni <laughs> that I always put aside for free. Yeah. What, um, how did you, what did you um, I think it was just the, the culture within the group and yeah. your friends that you have and yeah. you want to be at training. Like some of my best friends are from footy and yeah. um, when you have awesome coaches and you're getting like you know you're, uh, you are making a difference for that team, for the people that want to play the game, yeah. like – it sounds so cliche, but you seriously are putting in all that work because you know one day it'll pay off and you know you'll be better for it and you know that the people coming into the sport will be better for it. So it's like you've had you've got people – like say, for instance, I was the youngest in my team and yeah. then Cookie, yes. Louise, like she was Legend. double my age and she was still playing. So yeah. like she was like 40 and I'm not even 20, yeah. like that and kind of thing. And she's around. still – doing making all her club training i know she's still playing (laughs) she's still making all of her club trainings working full-time doing all of this stuff and still playing brumbies and like well like everything and family and like man if she can do it all i've really got to worry about is footy like and um it just not playing it you think god what are people actually thinking about or what do people do if they don't have footy in their lives because it consumes so Everything. much it's, so. and it, it's that um finding that balance because i know every time we had off season or just the end of the season and i'm like now what, what are people yeah doing i know 
<laughs> catch you... up with your footy friends. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's Literally like... on Saturdays or Saturday mornings, you'd go for brekkie and go yeah. play together and then go out together. Mm. <laughs> and it can become that fine line as you get towards, the, or I don't know, when you cross that fine line of um, that's all you know. So mm. if it's gone wrong then it's sort of like everything implodes and you've got no other outlet. So it's really important to um, have those other outlets, not just let it be. Yeah, exactly. Like not put all your eggs in one basket in case you do get dropped or you do get injured or you do not enjoy it as much as you thought you do. You've got to enjoy it because, of course, we enjoyed it. Like that's why we did it so much. And some people don't understand how big of a role it plays in your life but it really does play such a big role yeah and then i i suppose fast forwarding now you're you've rolled into this from union into and i know we've just like bypassed a massive (laughs) (laughs) um, (laughs) league but i think that's like also for you to have started in league to gone through playing as a young man, come through play a union, and mm. then you've did you, was your heart always in league? That's why you've gone back there, or um, <laughs> yeah, well, like I saw, obviously they were, I think the Super W, sorry, yeah, right. the Super W and the NRLW, yeah, um, they started in the same year. I think it was twenty eighteen, yeah, and okay. um, I knew a fair few of the league girls. And um, like Kezia Apps and I, we grew up in like from we went to the same high school, like we're from oh, the same little you? area, yeah. Cool. And so she was always like, "Come to league, come to league." And she yeah. would drive heaps, like she would drive from home to Wollongong to play club, like yeah. it was that's four hours, eight hour round trip, like it was just that's crazy. crazy. That's and like um, a yeah, it's messed up. Yeah. She was really committed. So then I was like, "Oh, what am I whinging off? about?" <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and so I. So, you know, I knew that they were putting in so much work and um, I think, yeah, so 2018, sorry, the NRLW and the Super W yeah. both kicked off. Okay. Um, and that was actually off the back of both of the World Cups in 2017. Oh, do the league and union... Yeah, they're in the World same Cups. year. Oh, okay. Annoying, I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, anyway, so... After play, so we had um, World Cup for rugby in yeah. 2017 in Ireland. Yeah. Best, funnest yeah. ever. Wish you were there, but ah, that's another podcast. I wish I was there. <laughs> we're going to have to do a podcast on you I don't think after this. <laughs> and we'll have to do like part one, part two, part three, part four. Yeah. Um, anyway, but I actually got injured um, after the World Cup in 2017 because I came straight back to play Aon at Bond. Oh, okay. So I was on a uni scholarship and I had to play yeah. sevens anyway and then I got injured and I was like you know what what were you doing at uni what did you um, do sports uni? management oh you did yeah okay. yeah Sorry. business sports management yeah whatever it was um <laughs> it's so good <laughs> <laughs> um and then it, so I got injured and I had to get shoulder surgery yeah. and I was pretty much out I was out all of 2018 yeah and that was like a really hard year for me watching both of these sports that I loved and one that I was just playing and Mm. watching all my friends just kill it and it like sport finally female sport getting some recognition and it was like oh my god and I'm just sitting here watching I ended up just pissing off to Europe for a bit like yeah yeah, I went for over for like six weeks and I was like you know what I'll just leave and I came back and I did all my wait sorry I think Sorry, I just thought I screwed up the audio. That's right. And I probably have. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so went over to Europe six weeks. Went over to Europe. Yeah. um, Came back, did like rehab, whatever. Tried to get back into some more footy, but... Union or legal both? um, More so, actually, no. I um, started training with Burley Bears before I got my shoulder surgery and I was kind of hoping to avoid shoulder surgery and it yeah, ended yeah. up being a very non-avoidable surgery. So I had to get it done. And so I started like doing pre-season with bears and then I was like, oh, got to go. Um, and then as I came back, I started like towards the end of 2018, I started training with Reds for yeah. um, Super W because we yeah. train start training like 
October, November yeah. yes. for the next year. Yeah. Like it's a bit for weird. February. Yeah, yeah, for those few games. <laughs> for six. <games. laughs> yeah. Um. So that was like my first little bit, and I was just like so keen to play footy. I'd mm. sat out that whole year, watched yeah. both of these sports just go so well, um, and. A lot of the girls that I played rugby with or know from rugby also played league or they did a bit of cross code with the clubs and mm-hmm. um, like Talisha yeah. Harden and Z, um, Z. Yeah, um, and Tani Norris was the coach and she was coaching us at Bond for seven. So it was like a lot oh. of the same people that they're like, come and play league circle. and yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. And yeah. I really wanted to, like I knew they were such a great club and I lived in Burley so it made sense. Um, and that's what you did when you were little. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so um, I started coming to trainings and so I was doing like the Burley, Burley training Monday and then like Reds training on Tuesday, Burley on Thursday, Reds on Thursday, whatever it was, and then play, um, on play on Saturday. And then like I wasn't really playing much rugby league because I was playing Reds. rugby union, yeah, yeah, Reds. So I felt pretty bad that I wasn't, but I was still just trying to keep my foot in yeah. the door there and in the loop and make sure I wasn't like playing the ball back or like mm. getting in trouble when I was playing league yeah, or right. union because people you know people aren't really too stoked you're doing both, both of them because yeah. they just know, want you to prioritize they want, want, yeah the absolutely they yeah. definitely want you to prioritize one or the other so you can be a better athlete which I definitely understand but yeah. I was like sorry you both got nothing really for me and I want to play yeah, both, both. Yeah. so um I just stuck that out and um did the uh super w and um loved it like i loved my team we lost to new south wales in the grand final yeah. which sucked but it was just such an awesome group like we just yeah. had the best times like loved training loved everything mm-hmm. um and then i think we had like pony stuff like um wallaroos yeah. training because we had test. some test matches against japan that year and um Can't- Canada? No. Did you no. go home? Oh, no. Um, New Zealand. Yeah. Right. So um, Japan, New Zealand. And I remember, oh, that's it. And I randomly played in this um, nationals tournament mm. for rugby league. We it was It's kind of like old school rugby union nationals. You oh, play like okay. a few games over a couple of days. Yeah. And um, I played for Southeast Queensland, like SEQ, and I probably should have played for New South Wales country because that's where I'm from. But anyway, I was playing and... Um, I got picked up for Origin, like New South, like that was New South Wales. Yeah, New yeah. South Wales. I got approached by the coach, and he called me when I was in class, like in class at uni, and I'm like, not Woolies. No, I wasn't Woolies this time, and it was a lot better news. <laughs> and um, it was Andy Patmore, and he gave me a call and yeah. watched at nationals and wanted me to come and play Origin, which was in a few weeks, and I'm like, what? That's insane. Like, you see how cool Origin is and you love it. Like, yeah. everyone loves Origin. Like, no matter what, what sport you are, yeah, yeah, everyone loves Origin. Yeah. So um, that was like, whoa, that's awesome. I remember saying to our coaches at Reds, like, our, like, Wallaroos coaches, I was like, oh, I'm really sorry. Like, I promise I'll be back next week. i just got to go for this week. We've got this... Just got this thing. like a little camp and a game on but I'll be back I swear and um it was uh origin, origin. and it was for New South Wales and I'm playing for Queensland in this but yeah I always got confused yeah the Reds Union and New well because like that's just where you live that's right. but origin, origin is like where your you're where you're from so um where you played your first like footy yeah. and where you grew up and stuff so yeah okay um yeah I did that and then I was like oh what this is sick like this is really cool like I loved it it was just so professional and you got it was just like like all time like really fun and um even playing against like girls that I'd played with and then against like Weiwei was playing for like oh, yeah. um, Queensland. Queensland. Talisha was playing for Queensland, like yeah, so the Maroons, yeah, yeah. and then a lot of girls that I play with Burley. So pretty much I hold like a lot. I'm playing playing against my whole team, and um, but then I made some great friends in my Origin for New South Wales team, and I just loved it. Like I just had so much fun playing, and there's just such a hype around it. I'm like, what the hell? It's just a footy game, like yeah. which is what I was kind of used to. And did you play with the men? 
No, we had our standalone game at oh. um, North Sydney Oval, okay. and it was such a vibe. It was just like it was over ten thousand people there. Yeah. Like it was just all like sold out, and all these little girls coming to watch the game, and oh, really? it was like those flame things. I'm like, yeah. well, it's just our game. Like there are all these people here to watch us, which is crazy. Like yeah, yeah. so many times you run into a stadium and it'd be. You keep talking. Keep talking. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm just going to check. Because yeah. I always do this. That's all right. Like, and then it goes off. I don't know what I do, to be honest. There we go. So, yeah. So um, like, yeah, we have um, high IT with yeah. my podcast. Huh, I love it. Hey, you <laughs> have two. Everything just turns off. You have off. two cameras, though, so that's. <laughs> that's my phone. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, so you're right. Big hype. Um, big hype about this one game. I'm like, yeah. it's just one game, man. But I loved it and it was so much fun. And yeah. I remember after the game, like all these little girls were like, like people could run onto the field, like your family, your friends, yeah. all these young little teams that would come. And like at first you're like, oh, like that's sweet or whatever. And you're like, because you see it happen in men's games when they do and it's like, how cool is that? But then you're like, actually stop and think. You're like, what? What the hell? These are all little girls yeah. running in their little jerseys that they're all playing league and they're all coming up for autographs or to for a picture or just to say hello yeah. because eventually this is where they, they want to be. be. And like that was like such a realisation point for me. Like, holy shit, like these guys are doing something where people want to be a part of and... I just imagine if you'd had when you were playing yeah. like sixes. Like I to a yeah. women's origin. That's game. it. Like I remember running onto the field after um they played a trial game down at Bega. It was like yeah. um Melbourne Storm and I love Melbourne Storm. Okay. And Camera Raiders. Yeah. And I remember running on the field, like getting a photo with Cooper Conk, who's my favourite. <laughs> and like Cam Smith and yeah. um, you know, just those legends of the game thinking, How cool is this? I just met these guys. And now there's and female legends. Well, now there's female girls. players that girls love and I'm like it's just kind of surreal like I've always been like kept it kind of like I'm a realist like yeah you know the, the reality the right. reality of men and women but I'm yeah. like this is the reality like yeah. these girls are actually loving it are actually loving it yeah. and want to play so I think that was like a big that was a big thing not. for me yeah after the game yep and then what did you tell the Reds coaches um i got back i was like yeah it's really fun but then we're back into yeah rugby so then you're then is that when you come across the that's an, yeah so after that so after origin like um they start like handing out your contracts for um nrlw so you've got the clubs like broncos roosters, roosters dragons and warriors yeah and um, a lot of my teammates that I play with are Burley and I live in Queensland and it makes sense and I loved everything Broncos were about and I loved the team yeah. and the crew and we just had a really great culture and whatnot and I loved it and so I signed with Broncos. I actually, I said no at the start because they weren't going to let me Do both. play. They're like, oh, you can't play from June. You're not allowed to play another sport. Like, oh, okay. And I was like, I'm sorry, like I've – trained so hard for rugby union and yeah. put in so much work and it's not fair to them it's not fair to me and I was like that's fine like I have loved league and who knows what it'll lead to in the future but I am yeah. not signing a contract because I um want to play rugby union both. Yeah. yeah oh well yeah I wanted well, to play both but I was like I'm committed to rugby union yeah. yeah and we had test matches that year and whatnot um so what like, are your thoughts on sorry to interrupt no you're not <laughs> what are your thoughts on the women being able to do it do you think we can justify playing both because there's no pay package that comes into play yeah well or, it, that's the thing if there's what, what what are you committing to that's really valued exactly you know what i mean and i 100 percent. and i like, like went through so much stress that I didn't realize was stress because I hate like conflict with people and like I don't want to have any bad relationships with people or like go behind anyone's no, back and does. you know yeah you just yeah. feel guilty and you all you want to do is play sport for Footy. god's sake yeah. yeah and it's like so I just was always really upfront with what I 
wanted to do yeah. and um i exactly that's the thing they're not do you have and there's to speak on your behalf i then? didn't i didn't at the time i didn't yeah. at the time so i was like doing a lot and like you don't need one but at the time i was doing just like a lot with my family and yeah. a lot of friends like a lot of friends from rugby a lot of friends from new like league yeah. asking them and i was just counting on a lot of them for their opinions and um so i just kept going with what I was doing, kept yeah. training with um, Burley. Yeah, kept training with Burley and kept doing rugby union stuff. Just kept doing both. Just kept doing it, <laughs> seeing how I was going. Yeah. Um, body was holding up all right, had niggly here and there, but it was fine. Um, and because I'd had that injury the year before, I was just like, I want to do everything I can when I can. Just happy to be there. Yeah. yeah. And um, I was like, sweet, if you don't want to pick me, that's fine. I just want to play. Like, yeah. I don't need to sign anything. And also, I'll I don't... just go play this code then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, yeah, that's fine. Um, and so we're playing our Japan games, I think. Down, yeah. For... You just did a, uh, like, Japan did a little tour, didn't Yeah, you? there was, like, one in um, Ke- Newcastle, Newcastle and yeah. then Sydney and then Western. Oh, no, that was for, um, oh, we yeah. had one in Newcastle, then Sydney. Yeah, and then you just went. Played New Zealand and Perth? New Zealand and Perth, yeah. yeah. And then New Zealand and New Zealand. Um, but I remember kind of in between those, I was still chopping out, finishing something, and then going back to league. And yeah. then how did, and how was there pressures from management? Or yeah, like, like from sport. I remember I'd always chat to... Um, Tyrell Barker, he was our um, one of our Reds forwards coach, and he did a lot of um, Aussie stuff with us for yeah. rugby union. Mm. And I'd always chat to him about. He's got such a level he, hair. Yeah, and like he was just a diffuser. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, like <laughs> crying. This <laughs> he, he was, he's um, he's great, and yeah. so he, he was someone who really helped me yeah. through all of that, and yeah. like someone who could have a level-headed approach to it without. Yeah overcomplicating it or yeah. where's like it's hard know, with friends it's hard with friends it's hard with your family like yeah. this was someone from the outside who could just really help me yeah. know what's best for me and remove emotion yeah 100 percent. just apply yeah and i'm logic. so yeah literally and i was so so glad that yeah. i had him for that yeah um and it ended up being that um the broncos still wanted me to play so they got a contract in to say that I could still play rugby yeah. union until yeah. we finished those test matches against New Zealand after Bledisloe and I think we played on the Saturday or Sunday and we trained I started training on the Monday for Broncos so it was yeah. like sweet now I finished that I'm into that um, and I was really comfortable with where I was at like um, still keeping up with things and still being able to play both and I'm yeah. so lucky that I was because I know there's players that don't get that so yeah i think that i was just because i was so upfront with it chatted to a lot of people about it let people know how i was feeling yeah um it really helped me i wasn't holding anything yeah what you wanted yeah from it and also i mean let's not take away that also great player so well no well they (laughs) went hand in hand like one was helping the other yeah as part from when I did weird yeah. shit on the field and it's like that is not this sport yeah. <laughs> but you know fitness physicality all yeah. that like helped you one sport helps the other it. exactly so yeah. I was like it's, it's not like you give them a reason not to pick to me yeah 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 okay yeah, tennis. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um so then how did your body hold up with juggling both because that's a huge overload and if you think specifically for one code like we know how you know, you've got to be, what's the word? Like you've often got to check in and then they have to manage your loads. And if you've mm. got the slightest niggle, they alter it. How did you juggle? Because it wasn't like just club level, like you were playing a top level for two codes. Did yeah. your body hold up? Um, it was niggly, yeah. like I was saying before. And I, was pro- I didn't really listen to my body because I was like, how cool is this footy 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 and um I remember my neck always being sore like I just was like god I need to fix that I didn't know how to fix it and I was like probably playing footy is not fixing it yeah or I'd like get a massage yeah exactly I'd sometimes get a massage and be like oh my neck neck, whatever but I'm like you know everyone has 
everyone is if you're not injured if you're not if you don't have something sore like are you really having a go (laughs) or you've got way too much time to like get it fixed or money money. (laughs) exactly yeah that's that's probably a good segue yeah your neck yeah so my neck started just like actually it was just getting progressively worse and i um Oh, like these things happened before it. Like I broke my rib in Origin. Thanks a lot, Chelsea and Lenarduzzi. And then we went and played together the next weekend. Like mm. it's crazy how that happens. Yeah. Anyway, but she that was always sore, and I would get it strapped up, and then had all these issues down on my right side, yeah. which my neck started taking a lot of strain for. And then it wasn't until it was like two days after our Broncos Grand Final. Yeah. It was the same morning that I had to get my ring cut off on my <gasps> finger because I was I stuck on there. I feel like that went viral. Yeah, like, like can you just yeah. So I like just... these stupid rings are way too small for people's fingers or maybe just prop fingers because <laughs> Weiwei's fit perfectly fine. <laughs> and I was like losing it, and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna put this ring on. This is after we won, and I was like, sweet, put my ring on, and I'll worry about it later. Yeah. And like after all the drinking and. Celebrating. celebrating and yeah. heat and flying and going back to Queensland and more drinking, whatever. And then it's like, oh shit, like this finger is sore. I tried everything. I was like looking up all this stuff on YouTube, <laughs> how to remove ring from finger. And um, I put like a message in our WhatsApp group and Bonnie, our doctor was like, go to the emergency right now. You, Your finger is not good. So I was like, oh, okay. Like went to the emergency. They fully they tried to get it off twice with like floss like dental floss they kept and i was like just cut my finger off it'd be less painful stop so they just ended up cutting the ring um and these are premiership rings. it's a premiership <laughs> ring i was like take it off i don't care like it was so painful and it was like fat man it was so fat and it was the swelling stopped yeah. It was bad. Anyway. So, so you're doing rehab on your finger? Yeah. <laughs> Literally, it was like that day or the day after that, I woke up and I went to do some training. And like my neck, I could not even move. I was like rotating, moving my whole head with my neck. Mm. Couldn't bend down, couldn't do anything, couldn't lift my arm. I was like, this yeah. is not normal. Hey, like this is just, I've woken up and it's yeah. something slipped or something has happened and um it wasn't great timing because we were going into um camp for world cup nines for rugby league and i'm like oh like (laughs) my neck's a bit sore (laughs) and it was like sore sore but i was like well if i say it's too sore i probably won't play because and isn't that um that's such common practice for every single player yeah it's not that sore because Actually, I don't want you to rule me out. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, it's like oh, I'll just put up with it later. It's just, yep. the, yeah, actually, just give me a heat pack. Yeah, oh, actually, <laughs> give us some uh, Panadol. Yeah. Um, Which is really dangerous. It's very dangerous and it can lead to very serious injuries, so I do Exhibit not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Exhibit A, the neck gets worse. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we played in the nines, mm-hmm. and that was like, I'm, I was a little bit disappointed because I knew I could have performed better. Yeah. Um, like you, there's two things you want to play. So you don't really care about your injury, but then you don't want to play and play bad and look stupid. So I chose number A, play and look bad (laughs) because I just wanted to play. Yeah. And that led straight into our test match. Did you talk to anyone like in terms of management? Yeah. Like it was a funny injury because, um, it was very painful, but. Like, they weren't sure what it was. Yeah. And I hadn't had a scan, which I'm really glad I didn't at that point because I would have got ruled out yeah. to play. So, um, and then we, yeah, so we had the test match and I remember just being in the worst pain of my life. Like, I literally hooked myself from the field going, not like straight yeah. away, but I was like, put someone else on, I yeah. cannot. I was just in so much pain. But it was amazing. Like, it was the best, it was so much fun and it was a great game and I just kept getting whacked in. Yeah. my shoulder and neck and I thought no oh, it's just a stinger I'm just winded whatever but it was just painful like really bad yeah. and um I knew something was definitely wrong but I knew that I just had to get past that test match and like we had I had I deal with it after that and yeah. um yeah ended up getting some scans and had like a bulging disc and the nerve was like all 
and that's scary because that's your neck yeah like that's it's not not to take away from any other injury but yeah, yeah when it's your neck you're so like oh my god yeah. <laughs> it's not like oh I'll just rehab my knee or my or my shoulder like i've done before it was like i can't actually when i'm driving like turning to look at cars or yeah. laying in bed like everything was just really impacted and um yes my mental health was impacted and then paying for appointments but you know you get reimbursed later on but it's just such a process if you don't have your private if you don't have that money up front like if you don't have the time if you're working like there's so many things that you can't really do because of an injury and um like we'll jump over to you when you had um when your face broke and we were (laughs) in you that's got stuck right. in Western Australia and that's on part B of your podcast, so I won't, that went won't rule that out. But, you know, <laughs> we were in that car yeah. <laughs> crying we about were, our injuries. Yeah. This was at the start of this year. That's and right. we were just like... I think you, you had called to check in on my broken face. Face, and yeah. And you, had and you couldn't had see an anything. appointment up in Brizzy. Brizzy to so get surgery. Like, I'll come get lunch. And they delivered shitty news to yeah. you. Yeah. So like I my, came out of the house and I couldn't She actually, couldn't even see where I was. Really? I'm, I'm, I'm out the front. I'm like, I'm just like where are you? Just come across the road. No, oh, no, I can't actually see because my face is broken and my <laughs> eyes covered. You had like, you were um, supposed to have one of those um, patches, eye patch things. That's so ugly. So I had to like walk you across the road and we're just <laughs> sitting in this car like crying, crying. Like, what are we doing? Like, you just feel so behind when you're injured and it's like, yeah. oh, this will and never that end. Real, um, that was a real low point. I think for bo- more for you because you've just been given the news. I no, but yours heard, was like I was just. Uh, you and know, you just lost your job and stuff. Yeah, you had a like, lot of stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> Moved place. It wasn't. Much. It just wasn't. And yeah. you looked really bad too. Like at least yeah. I could hide mine. Your eye was <laughs> like know. stitches, yeah. red, gone. And you know what? It's funny because my partner and I would walk down the street. <laughs> I never looked like you'd be. <laughs> he didn't want to walk with me. True. To start with, because yeah, we did. Looked we looked bad. like a stereotypical like wife beating couple. Yeah. So we just didn't. Didn't do go it. down the street. Anyway, so. <laughs> I know you're poor. So thing. that was a um. The, I that think that was, was just before we uh booked to go. To <laughs> Yeah, so because you let's talk about that because you were in camp. Yeah. And what was the. The group? Uh, um, we had... So Nigel Beach came over um, yeah. and this was like two days before I was supposed to get surgery. I was just listening to a podcast. It's I Love Ugly and Bowden Barrett was speaking on it. And, and he was talking about Nigel, Nigel Beach. Yeah. There you go. He, this guy is a dead set yes. legend. Yeah. And um, he came into this camp. See, if Bowden Barrett's talking about him, he is... <laughs> We're on to something. He's something. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I remember... So he came over to introduce Wim Hof to us and the um, different breathing exercises and how yeah. it can reduce a lot of stress and amazing stuff, like really amazing. Yeah. And that's what we all took out of it, like it's amazing, these amazing techniques and breathing... Breathing stre- sequences yeah. and stuff. Hey? And just creating a good habit in, in your everyday life. And how it impacts sport, but this guy was like, Psst, "I think you don't. I don't think you need surgery." And I work with people like you, aka Bowden Barrett. I'm like, yeah, same, same, same. Um, same no, but he does a lot of work. He's from New Zealand, and he yeah. works a lot of with a lot of athletes over there, um, doing preventative measures to avoid surgery mm. to better their performance. Yeah. And I'm like, sweet, I'm in. I'll book a trip to New Zealand. <laughs> And I was talking to you, and I literally decided within a day, I was I like, know. I'm going. I don't care if this guy reckons he's going to fix me. I'm going. Okay. My and mom was so angry. I know. I said, we're going to say I'm you're... going to New Zealand. And my mom was like, no, your face is broken. <laughs> you're not going anywhere. And Yours would have blown up again. I'm a, here I am, yeah, growing us. Yeah. And I'm getting told off by my no. mom. Because I'm like, I'm going to New Zealand. Yeah. My friend's seeing Nigel Beach, but I'm just going <laughs> to kind of tag along. Anyway. Yeah. I know, so, crazy, isn't it? And that was like, we were supposed to go, and then um, literally on the day we booked to go, the port is shut from COVID, yeah. and it was like, well, okay, well, um, 
well, we're not going to New Zealand anymore, yeah. but we were going to go together. We were. That and would have been a fun trip. I think so. <laughs> and, like, probably, I mean, we can talk about it because the reason we actually decided to go was we both of our... Mental <laughs> state. Health and our mental state was pretty it's not, fractured. Yeah. Um, and I think um, hearing that NRLW brought someone... Like on yeah. that caliber into, into a, camp a camp to give you literally for like three di- three days he was there for like yeah and I'm like so like the the measures that they take do you think those should be universal across because I definitely know that's not what gets pulled in um, in other codes other codes and whether it be a funding thing I don't I don't know yeah to code but look what are your thoughts on absolutely like I just. It? I really did notice a difference from rugby to rugby league. Yeah. Um, I know there are so many people that work so hard in rugby union just because they're such great people to make it a great experience for the players. But I think the NRL have just kind of... And following other... Like, look at the AFL, look at the soccer. Like, they're just kind of... The NRL have just also put themselves up there to say, we want to provide this, this and this... These are the stands we have. We want to offer contracts. We want it to be a semi-professional game because we don't expect these girls to do it for nothing. We're required. They're required to give up their time and put in their best effort and we're only going to get reciprocate of that if we pay them a bit of money yeah. so that they can return the favour and they don't feel like they owe us anything. That kind of, Not, you know, in that regard, yeah, I guess. so that you don't have to compromise. Yeah, you don't have to take shifts off work. Yeah to go to training like yeah. you're already getting compensated for that so definitely in that regards it was like they already want to look after you from the start yeah um and then just like the coaching staff and your mm. training kit and everything in between Should like create an environment that's yeah a bit more nurturing which i think is really important because then you have high caliber players such as yourself who have these massive blows like a neck injury and rather than losing them all together, they provide yeah, a that, set of tools that to can rehab get you, back you physically exactly. and mentally. There's those people there that are yeah. want to help and, you get back. That's and, right. And then, I mean, and then you take it upon yourself to say, like, we were going to go to New Zealand. Yeah. Because that's... Just because... We understand the importance, the importance of, of taking care of yourself. Yeah, and so. physically. But once you physically take care of yourself, it, it your just, mental state... It's a flow-on effect, yeah. isn't it? So I think that's a really um, good takeaway from this is that whilst we can, like, be in and out of the gym every day yeah. and, like, absolutely, like, train Slash the training. Down, yeah, yeah, if you're not taking care of, like, everything else. And it sounds so funny that something like a breathing exercise... I know. Seriously, if people aren't doing Wim Hof, like... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so good. Like, yeah. you notice the difference, it's... And it's like, how do we not know about that? And how, why are not more sports teams getting on to that, that like on taking board. that on board? And then even if you can set it to a national team and then they funnel it through their channels, like yeah. just let everyone know about it. Like there's so many benefits to these things that we have no idea about well, that we're trying to fix that are so old school, you know? Yeah. So then looking, I guess we're coming out the back end of COVID, touch wood. Melbourne. <laughs> um, how are you now? Like, because you didn't go get surgery. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I ended up we, yeah, see a surgery. We're not crying. We're not crying. Today. We're like happy. Um, <laughs> your face is less broken. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I ended up going down to New South Wales for mm. like an origin camp. And yeah. I just drove down because it's kind of before COVID really hit, hit. Yeah. Um, but I was like, I'll just drive because I don't know about flights and what they're doing, whatever. Yeah. So I've drove down, ended up staying for like three or four months. Did you to do that? Well, I don't really know. I just kind of, I went down to get a bit of rehab and mm. for training. Yeah. And um, I just do whatever because I don't really have anything. Like, I was like, oh, whatever. No yeah. It, I was only supposed to go down for a couple of weeks. Like, yeah. it was going to be easy. But I ended, up, I ended up like nannying for a family and... It's like our origin physio and he ended up mm. rehabbing and I did all of my 
exercises and strength and training and running and getting treatment yeah. through his through Baymed Performance and Baymed Physio mm-hmm. um, down in Wollongong. And it was like COVID was seriously so good because I got to get all of that back I didn't lose any time I wasn't missing out on footy and I could work on all of those things that I probably would have only half done if I was trying to get back like or had the pressure because everything else to get back yeah or had the pressure that I had to get surgery or like and then get back from that so I was really lucky it was like I know I was like thank you yeah (laughs) and um yeah now we're back and we're back into training and everything so and so what are you looking forward to say for the rest of the year do you think um just playing some footy like just yeah. getting in and playing a bit like yeah. we've got our bears stuff local comp mm-hmm. starting in august and we're already back training for that and it's just so nice to see the girls are training and stuff yeah. and get into our ru- a routine and have that and then hopefully with nrw and um origin towards the end of the year that you know, this year we can just like build from and then see how, see how things happen next year. But yeah. like we're in the best place in the best country, doing nearly back to normal kind of thing yeah. with all in that regard. So we're super lucky. So yeah, that's right. I think that's good. Oh, we were gonna yeah um uh, tie up in oh, the yeah. podcast. Yes. No, no, it's stressed you out, but I yeah. do have to ask the number question. one. What's the best advice that you've been given that you'd like to share? Um, I know you did tell me about this earlier and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, is there one piece that's really stood out for me? And there has been one piece of advice and it was from my dad and it was yeah. a while ago and then it was not long ago. It's nearly every time actually I talk to him and he goes after a game or whatever I go. Mm. Now look, Milo. Oh, he calls me Milo. <laughs> this is Milo. You're not that you're not that fast and you're not that skillful, but you try hard and it um, pays off. So I think you've really got to identify Thanks, what Dad. you're good at. And like, I don't know how to take that. Thanks, Dad. but like, Dad's always kind of been really to the point. To the point, like, no good game. Like, yeah. Mum's like, good game. I'm like, Mum was terrible. Like, my mum says every day. Yeah, great. <laughs> I'm like, I love you, Mum, and you're the best. But it was not this a good shocking. game. Like, yeah. so I think use what you've got like no I'm not naturally that fast and no I'm not naturally a ball player Mm. but what I can use is my physical like I'm quite big for a girl I guess and I've got good endurance so I can run for a while so like use what you can to at the best of your advantage and then just work harder than whoever's trying to get your position because there'll always be someone coming wanting your position and you're going to want someone's position so look what they're doing work hard and don't waste your time on things that you can't control like that's right i'll try and be fast and i'll try and be a good role player but that's not me exactly (laughs) exactly yeah Yeah. so whether that is you whether you're fast whether you're a Mm -hmm. ball player like just work on those little things that you can control um and in a team like someone who's fast they're not as big yeah exactly so that's not their strength exactly like and then when playing that's the benefit of team sport like you've got so many players that are all good at different things and just work really hard at it like great nice and simple (laughs) good advice and thanks dad for that thanks dad dad. um and then finally uh what is your hope for young girls in sport coming through um i think like similarly what how i touched on um after origin i think just having that um moment of like whoa there are so many girls here like if you think about it the world is 50 50 girls and boys like female to male like all of these girl boys have had these are awesome pathways and great people to look up to to Mm. put them in a great position where we're only now just getting the pathways and you worked so hard in this space i know with sunnybank and with junior rugby union that was never there before that like they just had to go from playing with boys to playing with a women's team when they're old enough like they don't have that pathway and i think we're finally getting those stepping stones right to transition them like people in 20 years like girls in 20 years playing footy now it's going to be 
so much better than what it is even right now yeah that's and then right. like the people that really care about watching footy and playing footy and give everyone the opportunity to be able to play like mm. it'll just be so cool to watch it I par think up and collective hope yeah i mean that. everyone wants that so. yeah no, and, I, and I'm, I'm exactly the same. All I want is to, like, bridge that gap. Yeah, so. exactly. And then, like, people... Sorry. Like, people will say, like, oh, they're not here. Put them against the boys and then we'll right. see how they go. And I'm like, ah, oh, you've literally taken us out of this sport I for know. so long. You, you cut us off at 12. And we're meant to have babies. Sorry, you want us to have babies too. <laughs> and, um, like, there's... Yeah. So girls are just killing it. And they're the way that well. they manage it all, it's mm. just... You know, it's just a part of what who they are, and it's yeah. just awesome. So hopefully, girls can be like, "Sweet, I want to play footy when I'm older," yeah. and that's a real, um, it's reality, reality for yeah, them. And a yeah, possibility. That's great. Yeah. I, I I know that we said that was it, but I also I really wanted to plug in on the Stella experience. Oh yes. because I love it. Well, I love what you're doing and. Why? Why? So yeah. Do you just okay. Yeah. Like Actually, I'll. How do I? Yeah. Well, so, yeah. another piece of advice: don't put all your eggs in rugby because you need something on the side. So, yeah. um, I do a bit of this and that, whatever um, comes up. But I'm very passionate about um, young adults and kids with disabilities, and just really integrating them into the community and normalising everything that they should be able to have the opportunities that yeah. um, able-bodied people can. So um, some mutual friends of mine started this organisation called Stellar Experiences mm-hmm. down in like Wollongong, Sydney area. And that actually came about when I was in COVID yeah. down there. So it was like great time. Another it, great, great thing from COVID. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, with, so my younger sister, Hannah, yeah. she's just turned 18 and um, she's got Down syndrome and I've always just uh, she's always just been a normal kind of just like us so we've always fuck, I kind of like can I just start again with that yeah, yeah I didn't yeah, even yeah. know where I was going with that sorry I'm sorry distracted. that's fine is it on um Stella so I'll start with Hannah so yeah. my younger sister Hannah mm-hmm. um she has Down syndrome and she's just we've always just seen her being a part of us and doing whatever we do. And yeah. I've always thought that she should have the opportunities that we yeah. all do and um, all of her friends and whatever. Like there's so many people that everyone knows someone with a disability, whether it's yeah. autism, whether it's Down syndrome, whether it's like an impairment of some sport, inter- yeah. like intellectually or whatever. Um, Anyway, so stellar experiences, it just gets people in a social outing in a group where they're not being cared for. They're just having a group of people that they can hang out with and do things that me and you would love to do on the weekends. Like this weekend, we're going to Byron. We're doing like the lighthouse walk. We're going to the farm, yeah. having some lunch, you know, just doing just doing whatever, going to the beach, like going to go to the zoo soon, like just do cool trips where it's like go paddleboarding, do all those things that they don't they probably don't usually do and that they are um have missed out on so that's a little thing i do on the side with um my good friend leah so yeah we're loving that and it's really cool we can't wait to see it take off we really saw that there was an opportunity on the gold coast for it and um yeah that's i'm really great. excited so if anyone wants say, to know like, any more info they, yeah. on stella mm-hmm. um hit me up or i don't know go onto the instagram or the website and you'll find out heaps more info it's all um funded oh like it's all run through ndis so it's all like you know, funded yeah it's all they can just do it exactly yeah come, it's all come meet you guys hey, yeah give us a call yeah. Cool. And I love that because I think, again, equal opportunity. Yeah. Um, and it's just a community based. Exactly. To help them out. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Yeah. And Thanks, I think we're, you're so welcome. So thank you so much um, for coming on no and chatting. It's thank been you fun. for coming down to Burley. Thank you. I will just come for breakfast, not a uh, boot camp next time. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, we can do a part two. That's okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.